Will Will's mad. Yeah, because you're a douchebag. Like, <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Relax. No, you're always fucking with you. Though. I'm always fucking because I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Edit that in the end. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll start this one. Don of the Atlantic Seas, captain of the East Coast, your premier puffer right now, Hungry Box. Oh, he whistled it! Wow! Whistled it into into it! Up smash kick! Unbelievable! That is something you don't see every day. Tail in the back of the head. That's rude. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is what we wanted to see today. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Directional Influence. This would be episode 15. Uh... With me today is, of course, my good friend Dakota and Will. Dakota, how are you doing? I'm doing dandy, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Will. How are you? Pretty sweet. Nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, last week we talked about Project Melee a little bit. Uh, this week we're venturing back into the brawl once again. With uh, We're going to talk about some of the upcoming tournaments leading up to Pound. Uh, we're gonna talk about a uh, a video about the competitive mindset that uh, Gimpy Fish has recently released, which we'll we'll give you a link to that at the end of the episode or whatever. And uh, we'll also be having a very special interview with Alpha Zealot, who uh, ran the MLG tournaments, a very well established Diddy Kong name from the Midwest. In case you haven't heard, so stay tuned, guys. Check it out. <laughs> Okay, guys, so I main Snake. Anyway. <laughs> Alright, so today we're going to be talking about Player Progress, which is a video series started by Gimpy Fish. You guys should know him from the Melee days, and he's been around in Brawl, I guess. Uh, which is actually being run through VUV, if you guys didn't know. Um, which I didn't know either until very recently. But uh, I guess that's sort of a affiliate of ours now. And... This week, he talked about motivation, and it went into a competitive mindset, like uh, Matt said earlier. And, uh, guys, I listened to it, I watched it. What did you guys think about it? I was actually pretty... Well, I've never actually seen Gibby Fish before, so that was cool. So I got to see him, I got to see the, the Bowser. He was legendary for ferrying people off the stage multiple times. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it was really cool because you got to see his... His mindset on both the, the the competitive gamer and the casual gamer, and that you know how how in society we like to have it as a, as those two separate categories, but it's actually it's not it's a little bit more complicated than that because he goes into how people that even that people that play casually can have a competitive mindset for something because you know you want to beat all your friends, but you might not know all the intricacies of the game, and he just, you know, it was, it was pretty enlightening. One thing I felt he didn't really touch on, but there's another reason I think that we have to have a distinct difference between, like, we have to eliminate these stereotypes of casual and, and, and competitive gamers, is that people always say, oh, well, casual gamers only play for fun. Well, you know what? Competitive gamers play for fun. Because, I mean, I wouldn't be playing competitive brawl if I didn't enjoy it. I mean, it's just the way that I enjoy playing the game. Definitely. And going back to what Will said, how you know people definitely want to you know, play almost in a competitive sense casually, 
Uh, one of the things Gimby Fish said during his video is that people don't play games to lose, which is extremely correct. Nobody hops in Mario Party and expects to lose all the mini games and like, oh, I'm having such a fun time. Because to have fun really is to win. You know, that's really what ends up making you know the whole situation. And I guess what really defines competitive gamers is that yeah, we do go into that depth and we do have that mentality of really, really focusing and being motivated on our goals rather than just sort of just playing the game for what it is. And that's what I liked about what Gamey Fish did is that he really defined it, like each side of it, but also showed that there definitely are gray areas and that not everything is like black and white. And he did depict the situation such as in Super Street Fighter 4 when Ken is sitting there Spamming Hadouken from the opposite side of the screen, waiting for you to jump over them, and then, you know, dragon punch you. Like, those campy, annoying play styles. A lot of people are like, oh my god, you play so, so gay, like, why are, you, why are you camping like that? It's not fun. But, like, he points out that it's a very simplistic strategy, and the, uh, a pretty common one that they're using, and he points out that you can easily overcome that if you just make the adjustment and then he goes to say that if you make that adjustment whatever small adjustment it might be that's that's something competitive and that's that's a motivated player and that's and he, and he says that you know that's something that we should all aspire to be because i to me you have more fun when you you know when you make those adjustments because then you're trying to win and it makes it more interesting all around for both players yeah, I I would agree with that. Uh, or if you're like Goken, that's apparently how you beat Ken. Is you go Ken and just destroy this person. Yeah, you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> three hit combo into Ultra. Apparently. Just do. Yeah, apparently just do that. You'll win automatically. Um, you know, I mean, he definitely has some good analogies, and you know, he's a pretty big Mario fan, and he uh, related it to New Super Mario Brothers and how you have to beat each boss if they have a pattern. And patterns are really important in competitive play because everybody has patterns. Even if they're trying not to be predictable, everybody has patterns because that's just how humans are. Uh, and a thing about competitive play is that people look for patterns and see how to beat them. And it gets more complex as you get higher in the, on not metagame really, but in competitive, uh, levels really because the top players aren't going to be as easy to beat with their patterns and things are going to mix up and it's going to be really hard to really, you know, beat someone just by looking at them and saying, alright, well I have to do this, not that. Um, even though I do have some grapes, though, and these are just stupid ones, but, uh, the fucking music, <laughs> playing the entire time. Was it really annoying music? I didn't even, like, notice. It was, it, it was, was not. Alright, he doesn't think it was. I don't think it's, like, annoying, but, like, if I hear anything that's in, that over and over and over again in a loop, like, especially something from Mario and Luigi, which is, by the way, a great game series, I'm not gonna hate on that, but, god damn, the same freaking tune, over and over and over again. But that's, I don't want to like overshadow anything that I did because the video overall was great, ten out of ten. I'm just saying that was it. You know what? Actually, I take that back. It really didn't bother me much, only in retrospect, because like when I was li watching it, it really was more enthralling what he was actually saying. So I'm gonna have to give him props that he definitely kept my attention during the entire time. <clears throat> I was actually reading one of the comments, like one of the first ones, and they said. They were like, wow, this is the video that I need to show all my friends back at college that lose to Melee. I was like, wow, I know exactly how this person feels. Like, <laughs> when you play to a level where um, basically in, in competitive play, we like to call it sandbagging when you're not trying or when you're kind of trying to dumb it down so that you can play on the level of your opponent. But at times for competitive players, it's not fun. To just like not try. So you you know if you go all out and then people complain when they lose to you, it's they get very frustrated and they lose all motivation to play. They say they're gonna quit and I don't know. I think if they if they saw this video, it might give them a little bit more. You know, it'll show them the mindset that competitive players have, and it can also come uh, show for, um, where you know where the casual players are coming from. So maybe they would. You know, try to make an adjustment or at least not, not give up so easily because I know exactly how whoever that person is feeling and I wish more people were more motivated when they played. Yeah. And for new players, like myself really, I mean, I'm not really new anymore, but I'm still really bad. It, it motivated me to actually, you know, get better because 
I guess I saw a light at the end of the tunnel. And I mean, I'm in Snake now, so it's all good. I mean, obviously I'm going to do well now because I'm using a good character, I guess. Right? Yeah. Or it's not about player skill, it's about characters. <laughs> obviously. Well, Brawl is anyway. Just pick a good character, <laughs> ca- counterpick people, you'll win. Unless you're ADHD. In which case, if you play as Mennonite, like, you may not always win. Mennonite. Which way? Which way, like, did it, was he actually there? Or, like, was he entered into the bracket? Yo, you guys got trolled so hard. That's, see, that's yeah, what I, I thought. Yeah, okay, yeah. Especially right, Kilo. He was right. trying to, like, correct everyone. He was like, no, I heard that, that he wasn't, that ADHD wasn't really there, but. Yeah, oh I God. saw that, and, and Snakey, I wasn't gonna post it. He trolled everyone so hard. <laughs> like, he, he went yeah. with it. It was really good. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely did believe it, but I wasn't like, I didn't care a huge amount, but like, Chibo kept posting, and I was like, well, I don't want to post again, because then there's two VVV members in this thread, and I don't know, that's like, hands off for me. Just in case you guys don't know what we're talking about, there was a tournament in New Jersey, in Jersey City this past Saturday, called Rambats 1, uh, abbreviated for Ranked Battles. The first tournament of the series that is taking place, and I actually have a list of the series, but anyway, um, yeah, everyone thought ADHD was there because his name was in the results, and that he placed last, but it was actually just some random Diddy Kong who entered under the tag ADHD, and everybody got trolled really hard in the results thread, because they thought that Wyatt actually went and came in last place. <laughs> hey, some players have bad days, too. <clears throat> Not everybody can be good, but... Speaking of tournaments, Will, we have a lot of uh, good stuff to look forward to before Pound 5, don't we? Yes, and that series that I just mentioned, um, I have a list of them exact tournaments. Of those exact tournaments. And by the way, everyone should be going to Pound 5. If you're not going to Pound 5, shame on you. Go to Pound 5. And if you can't go to Pound 5, if there's something that's desperately in the way, at least make it to these tournaments that Will's about to fill you in on, because at least you'll get some competition with the people who are going to be going, and next time there is a big, huge tournament that you can go to, you won't suck as much. And by the way, guys, if you are planning on going to Pound 5, which you should be, I don't care what game you play, you should be going to Pound 5, you guys need to register, because yes. for the love of God, there's like... 40 people registered for this tournament that has national hype. It's ridiculous. You guys really need to step it up and register because, you know, that attracts more people to come if more people are, are already saying they're going. So just step up to the plate, guys. Come on. Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely people register. And not only register because it hypes people up, but register because if you don't, you can't actually play in the tournament, which is sort of important. You know? Yeah, I think that's probably the most important yeah. aspect of going to a tournament is to play. Is to play. Yeah, exactly. So if you don't if you don't feel like playing, then you know what? You still have to register because I believe you have to register if you're like spectating and like yes. Right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So if you're going, you regardless of what you're doing there, you could be having our circle jerk in the hotel room the entire time. You have to register at, at any point between then. It's January, right? Like, there's no reason for you not to register. Seriously, guys. Right. So I found a list, and the the series that I believe the hosts of this series are, I just got done talking to Alex Trice. It's, it's Alex and Helper, those are the two New York CEO slash hosts, and it was also Doom, Heitaro, and RJ, I believe, I want to say. And the, the list of events that they have here was January 8th, 2011 was the first Ranked Battles event. January 15th, 2011 is Katar 4. That's this weekend coming up. Um, January 22nd will be the second Ranked Battle tournament, um, I assume. January 29th is Viridian City 9, which Out of Region is attending. I'm pretty, pretty certain that I heard that Florida was coming, which is ridiculous. And I'm not really sure who else is coming, but um, do you know the names of some Florida players coming, either of you guys? I, I know for a fact that MVD is going because I'm teaming with him. Um, you know what? I do not know, actually. Maybe, is he Sam going, or? No, I, I know, otherwise those two would be teaming. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, yeah. But, uh, I think it's like MVD, I heard Seabrook. Oh, I don't know if you guys, like, heard about this. 
Um, yeah. I, I want to say it was MVB Sieber Afro. I'm not sure. Either way, it sounds pretty hyped, though, right? Yeah. yeah. And continuing on, uh, February 12th is the third event. will be the third ranked battles event in... There's a, actually a consistent venue for the ranked battle tournament, which is it's called the E Spot in Jersey City, New Jersey. It's very, very close to New York City. It's a really good spot, all in all, for New York, New Jersey to get to. It's there's like no reason you shouldn't be getting to. Eat. Also, you get ranked points at each event if you place really well, and it determines your seating in the, in the following event. So, oh, interesting. Yeah. And it's like a pro, pro and amateur bracket at the end. Um, I'm not really sure how it works, but and then um, February 19th is Pound Five, which yeah, that's a big one. You guys should probably be pre-registering for that, or if you haven't already, which I haven't, sadly, because I forgot that the price goes up for the registration <laughs> for that. Each yeah, one, it goes up by like what, like five bucks? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, so definitely yeah. get that done before February something. Like, you don't want to be paying like the full, absolute full price for that. I remember back in August, I was like, "Yo, I gotta register this. Price is gonna go up." And my, uh, I think Cheese was like, "Oh, you know what? You're fine. Well, you can register whenever. It's not a big deal. I mean, it's in February, and now it's January, and I just read. I actually, I have to register too. I'm gonna be registering soon." Yeah, moral of the story is if you can clear your schedule for that day and you know that you're going to go, just pre-register immediately. Like, there's Definitely. no reason. You'll be saving a lot of money on the, on the venue. Yeah, no matter, um, no matter how much it goes up, like every tournament that does this, I can never remind myself to do it. And it's really a problem <laughs> because we really should be more on the ball as a Smash community, just like getting on the ball and registering for these tournaments. And the final event of that series actually is March 5th. It's two weeks after Pound 5 because they're giving you, you know, it's like a week recovery because Pound is going to be like such a ridiculous event that people are kind of going to be smashed out. So they might want a little bit of a break. Um, but yeah, that's that whole tournament series and it's going to be crazy. And it was, it was organized by those five hosts that I that I mentioned to you. And there's one other thing I want to mention that is actually a very new development. As of today I was I was notified and this thread was made at least. Um but a local Long Island player has set up a new venue out in Nassau County. It's a it's a place in Valley Stream. I haven't gotten a chance to check it out yet. But um yeah, Coontail. He, he has gotten a venue for the Long Island Smash team, and he wants to organize bi-weekly. So that's one tournament every other week, which is pretty frequent. And that's actually going to be on January 22nd, which does conflict with one of the ranked battles events. But the thing is, it's not a major event that we'll, that we'll be conflicting with, so I don't think that we're going to lose too much attendance for for that other series, and <clears throat> if we get enough attendance at this this Long Island bi-weekly event, then we'll get it going. It'll be successful, and the venue will, you know, they'll support it. So, anybody that you know that hears this, please either get in touch with me, um, talk to me on AIM. If you guys don't know my AIM, it's posted like everywhere. Hit up my Facebook. I'm pretty much posting this everywhere, but it's gonna be called the it's called the Uprise of Long Island, uh, Return to Long Island Smash, which I thought was pretty long, so <laughs> I gave it the abbreviation Not long enough. Uh, RLS. It's Return to Long Island Smash, so it's RLS, and that'll be the bye week for Long Island, if we can get it going. So, guys, exactly. check that out and, and, you know, support it, because Long Island as a scene itself in the Smash community has been pretty... Dead. Let's just say there's no tournaments, like, at all. No tournaments. It's like Connecticut. No tournaments. And you know what? We used to travel. We used to thrive. I mean, we used to thrive with Castle Golf and stuff, but, I mean, Long Island's a great place to go, guys. I mean, people from the city, people on the, the outskirts of, of New Jersey. It's not that bad, yeah. It's so really not. Location is just perfect. don't go to Hempstead. <laughs> just don't go to Hempstead or Roosevelt. Bad places. And by the way, I just want to say something because obviously this is over near us in Long Island, you know, whatever. 
But for those of you who aren't in the area, set up bi-weeklies. Like, you should be doing this too. Because, it, you know, there's no reason for people not to be, like, doing something every weekend, or at least on big weekends, playing Smash and, you know, having fun, having tournaments and stuff. Bi-weeklies are pretty legit. So if you aren't in the area and you aren't able to go to rank battles or you're not able to go to, uh, you know, return to Long Island Smash or whatever, make your own bi-weekly. I know a lot of places already have them, but keep making more because that way everyone can go to them and it'll be fun. Yay. Yeah, definitely go do that. Oh, I almost forgot the most hyped point. Like, I almost left it out. Oh, hit us with it. Here's a go, go, go. Two dollars and you see. What? Two dollars, and yeah, that's right. Two dollars. Two dollars, and you see. There's absolutely no reason. For oh, bam. That's, right there. That's not even half a foot long. <laughs> that's not even... Wow. That's not even anything. That's like, that's money. That's like couch money right there. <laughs> so go get your couch money and hit up Return to Long Island Smash right now. Alright guys, so we're at the interview portion of the show. We always love having guests. And uh, today we have a very special guest, uh, host of the MLG series, host in the Midwest, Diddy Kong Main, with a lot of recent success lately. We've got Alpha Zealot. Alpha Zealot, how are you today? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Awesome. Alright, so uh, we got some questions. Coda? Yes. I want to start off first. Obviously, thank you for being on the show, but can you at least tell us how you got into Smash Bros? Um, gosh, I, I started playing, you know, everyone had the 64 version, but I didn't, you know, know anything about Smash Bros or anything probably until, I don't know, mid-2003. I had a friend, he went by the Muffin King on the boards. Um, he just got me into playing Melee competitively. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we ran a tournament series called Bomb. Uh, it was really successful. Some of the biggest tournaments on the East Coast at the time, back in like 04, 05. Um, and I just kept going with it from there. I started working for MLG in September of 2005, so it's been a while with them, and I've just been fortunate enough to keep with the community and uh, met a lot of really great guys over the years, so uh, stuck with it. I want to fast forward here really quick, unless you have any very special memories between now and then. Uh, anything you'd like to let us know about? Uh, I've got a lot of special memories, uh, you know, over the last seven years or so, so, uh, it's right. too many to count. <laughs> <laughs> Any big important ones then, like when you really just love remembering almost? Uh, melee wise, probably my best memory was Genesis, seeing the Ar- Armada vs. Mango game, where, uh, Armada does the, uh, the zero to death with the death turn up. That was just insane. Seeing that live, you know, almost a thousand people just cheering was crazy. That was that was hype enough to that watch was hype. like the video of it. I can't even imagine the experience of seeing that live because Yeah, it was just otherworldly really. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I mean, obviously one of the biggest things you're known about is the fact that you're you know, you work with MLG, which is really awesome. How did you get involved with actually being a part of MLG? Uh, I got really lucky. Um, back in the uh, summer of 2005, uh, you know, they had just picked up Brawl in 2005 as a full-time uh, game for the, you know, every stop of their circuit. Um, and they did an open call for, you know, people to do writing. Uh, and, uh, you know, I had written, like, a paper in high school for... Um, one of my English classes, and it was about how I went to MLGGC and, you know, just sort of my whole experience there. So I used that as my writing sample, and I was fortunate enough uh, to be accepted. From what I understand, I was actually the second person they, you know, they wanted. Like, the first person said no, and he found out it was unpaid. So I was, you know, not even, like, their first choice. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they, they uh, you know, hey, you want to, you know, write for us? It'd be about an article every two weeks, um, you know, unpaid and everything. And I was like, yeah, sure. Um, you know, I got nothing better to do. Um, and it'll be a lot of fun. I think I can, you know, help the community and get, you know, word out because I was really passionate, you know, about playing Smash. So, um, from there, it was, you know, it's been a long ride. Um, Melee was dropped in 06, uh, but we had the underground circuit in 07. So I went to all four of those events. Um, and I just loved the company MLG so much. Uh, you know, I did anything I could just to stick with them. 
So in 07, I like worked their information booth. Uh, in, in 08, I played, you know, I played some Halo. So I, I did Halo refereeing in 08. In 09, I did more Halo refereeing and then I started working with the Madden community too over there. And then, uh, you know, through that whole process, I kept pushing Smash and, you know, with JV and with some other, you know, just some good luck, we managed to get, you know, Brawl on the circuit in 2010. So really happy about that. That's pretty much it, I think. So you were directly involved with like, like adding Brawl to the circuit for 2010? Um, well, I, to be honest, I, you know, I, I don't know exactly what sort of role I played. Um, in the middle of, uh, 2009, I created a 40 page report, essentially, uh, detailing Smash tournaments, like how many happened around the country, you know, just how big the community was. And, uh, you know, I, I worked with JV a little bit on the support and, you know, I ended up just handing it straight, you know, to Sundance and, uh, you know, Adam Apicella, you know, Clap, um, and a couple of other guys, you know, higher ups in MLG. Uh, and I didn't know if it did anything I, until, you know, uh, actually after this season ended, you know, I finally, I talked to some a little bit and he mentioned the report and so, uh, you know, a year and a half after I did it, I actually found out that it, you know, had some sort of effect. Um, so, uh, that felt pretty good. I was like, all right. <laughs> uh, MLG has been a great company. Like, you know, they've always said, you know, if you show us the stats, if you, you know, if you show us sort of representation your community has, you know, we, we might throw events for you guys. And most people, they never actually go out and produce the stats because take it from me, it's like a 50 hour process. It, it's not fun. Um, <laughs> I would assume so. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, um, you go out on a limb and this time I think it paid off. Um, and you know, and again, it wasn't just me. It was coming from a couple directions. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, <for sure>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we all loved it. And, you know, Unfortunately, it was only there for one year, but when Brawl finally did make it and uh, the first event was Orlando, were you happy with how it turned out throughout the season? Um, it had its ups and downs. Um, coming in, you know, I, I knew we wouldn't cap the first event, but I figured with the hype, we we could cap a couple of the events for the rest of the season. Um, and, you know, we came really close in Columbus, which was probably, well, attendance-wise, it was our best event. Hype-wise... I don't know, the champ Dallas was really hyped overall with you know, the crowd experience and uh, and Orlando was just man, those Florida guys, they're just crazy. <laughs> um but uh I'd say it the the for the whole season season as a whole it, it met a lot of my expectations, but it fell short in some pretty crucial areas. It was a good season, but it could have been better. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if you could go into maybe some detail about some of the problems that came up or some of the successes. Just what were, what exactly were the ups and downs? Um, all right. Well, I mean, up, ups wise, um, you know, we came into the season with sort of a controversial rule set. Um, and, you know, people were saying before the first event even happened, you know, Meta Knight would absolutely crush, uh, you know, it was all, you know, the stage is just made for Meta Knight. Everything was, you know, in favor of Meta Knight. And, you know, that ended up not being the case over the course of the season. Uh, despite there being more representation of the best Meta Knight the MLG event than anywhere else ever. So, um, I consider that, I don't want to say, you know, like, a, uh, I guess it's a positive thing, but, you know, it's definitely, uh, you know, shows that you can do something a little bit out of the ordinary and still have success. Um, on the same on the same side, though, you know, there were a couple of rules that uh, needed some tweaking over the season. Um, you know, Will, you were directly affected by the pause rule. Um, oh, as yeah, it was. rally? I don't even remember. I kind of tried to. Uh, yeah, that would be it. Would be rally that it, you know that the that you know you paused and you lost the match. Um, and you know we changed the rule after that to you know if you pause. One stock. Um, so, uh, which I respect. Know. I respect yeah. you guys actually amending that because I know that's like a huge thing to actually change, like the entire rule set, like a part of the rule set that's been been established beforehand. So I respect that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, the big thing is we can't, you know, change the rule mid tournament. What's yeah, exactly. what's what is the rule at the start of the tournament is the rule for the whole tournament. You know, uh, and ultimately as a as the you know uh, tournament director, it's my job to make sure that the rules are enforced as they are on the book. So, um, 
But, you know, I, at the same time, it did seem, you know, the punishment at the time was really harsh. So amending the rules seemed like the right thing to do in response to what happened. Um, I wouldn't say that, you know, that was necessarily a, a down. I mean, it was in some respects sort of because, you know, there was a whole big controversy and, you know, it always blows up on the boards afterwards. But, uh, you know, um, we were able to work past it. Unfortunately, you know, the players that were affected, Will, you included, you guys were mature about it. So, uh, you know, it could have been a lot worse um, of a situation. In terms of other downs, I mean, uh, I won't even get into the, the whole uh, the end of the season, you know, mutating ADHD situation because, you know, I think Sundance handled that. Uh, just fine on the loser's bracket, you know, a couple weeks ago. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing I was upset about was just not capping a single event. I mean, when you, especially Dallas with $35,000 on the line, like, we're probably never going to see a tournament with that much money on the line ever again. Uh, I mean, that just blew the second biggest tournament out of the water in terms of, like, prize money offered. Like, when you go to Apex, when you go to Pound, like, the prize pool is four or five, maybe six thousand dollars total for singles, and that's on the high end. Um, and, you know, MLG they're offering seven and a half grand every event, thirty five thousand, you know, for the championship. So like, you know, always pay to the top eight too. You know, it wasn't just top three, top five. Um, so the payouts were deep. So I was really surprised that there wasn't more. You know, it, one event should have capped at least one of them. You know. <laughs> um, so I think that was for me my biggest disappointment for the season. Um, yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> so we get to the end of the season, and everyone's very concerned that Brawl, which would end up get do uh, end up getting dropped. Were you involved with that decision as well, or did you have anything related to that, or that was just sort of like hands off for you? Um, I I had nothing to do with it. I mean, uh. I had, you know, I, I knew sort of what was happening, but I, uh, the, the process of making that decision is involved much higher up than I am in the, in the organization. Um, as is the process of adding a game, you know, again, all, all I can do is, you know, hype it and, you know, it's up to the, you know, the really high up people in the, in MLG to, to make the decision whether to add a game. Uh, and it's really a, a, multifaceted or process for whether they add or even, you know, drop a game. You know, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't have anything directly to do with it, you know, whether or not I got to stay. So all I could do is, you know, tell them that, you know, we're still a really huge community. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, uh, that makes sense though, because like, you don't really want the, the most high up um, authority to really be biased one way or another, because they're you have to understand that, and I know that a lot of us understand that they're doing things on a business perspective, and they're not gonna you know hold a general favoritism over one game or another. It's just whatever is gonna be you know the most popular, or whatever has you know like you said the statistics and has the community. So, I mean you know we got our fans, and unfortunately it it's over, but you know. I mean, we still have the community. It's not like we're dead at all. So we still have ridiculously huge tournaments coming up that we all have to look forward to. And I, for for me, I mean, I'm very, very grateful that that MLG happened. And like you said, you, you weren't sure if you had a say in it, but it sounds to me like you had a huge say in the fact that it even came around for Brawl, which was, a, it was an amazing experience. And I'm definitely very grateful for that. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have been able to meet all of the many, many people that I did because I went to most of the events. So, so definitely, thanks again. Well, uh, you know, appreciate the support. And, you know, especially during the season, we coming out to the events and everything. Um, especially since I'm a big fan of uh, Donkey Kong. So, <laughs> yeah, he already knows UK all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, too good. I mean, I'm, you know, I actually was unable to make any of the events, and that's just because I'm a loser and I can't make it out to anything. But I heard how well they were run, and I really wish that there was another season because I was really looking forward to maybe like a Meadowlands or something I'd be able to go to, and just I wasn't able to. I'm just so jealous that everybody was able to experience it before I was. Well, who knows what the future is? Well, that's too, I want to ask. Uh, what does the future hold? Do you know anything 
Like, really, what does the future hold for Smash or just MLG in general? Uh, I, I, you know, um, I, I think uh, our best shot, the best hope is you know, the throwback event stuff, but I really have no idea what's going to happen um, in in the future. Um, well, in terms of the throwback events, though, like those those definitely happen, right? Because I haven't heard of them before, but um, they you know if they're gonna have because I saw on that poll or whatever it was that it actually just brought brought to my attention that there even is a throwback event, so that they might even have other other games like Melee, Halo Two, like other like past games that they might have had already, and it said something about. Either having a different game every event, or having that one throwback game for the whole season. Do you know like which which route that MLG might take, or is that just something that? Um, uh, I really, I would have to say, um, you know, the the poll that you see on MLG is not official. Um, it's a user generated poll. I mean, it's I'm sure people you know higher up in MLG are, are probably looking at it, but you know, uh. I really don't know what the plan is. I would assume, based on comments already made by both Adam and Sundance, that they'll probably have a different game at each event. Um, but, you know, I really don't know any more about it than what's already been said publicly by those two guys. Following this season, I mean, you mentioned Melee earlier and how there was, you know, the underground uh, tournaments and whatnot, the grassroots sort of thing going on after Melee was dropped. Will Brawl sort of have that same sort of support now that it's on the circuit? Uh, you mean from MLG? So yeah. Giving Brawl a grassroots thing? Um, you know, if, if there turns out there's nothing for the pro circuit, I'll probably, you know, draw up some sort of proposal for them and, you know, who knows what happens. You know, it's impossible to know at this point, uh, until they release their season schedule. Mm -hmm. And what will you be doing now that you're not directing the MLG Smash Twins? Uh, well, I get to go back to playing again. Um, <laughs> sure. sure, sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, I still run my, my local tournament in Columbus, Ohio. I'll be running one this Saturday, actually. Ah, uh, it's a shame you that you don't live a little bit closer to the East Coast because we have Katar 4 going on this weekend. Yeah, I'm well aware. Um, actually, so Katar came out to one of my local tournaments, uh, Wings and Brew 4, back wow. in, like, June 2009. He ended up beating me in Winter's Finals. Um, <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> Falco, man, I can't handle that. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. You did uh pretty ridiculously well at uh Sys Four this past weekend. I saw. I was watching on the live stream actually. Um, what was that? Like fourth place out of like a hundred and seventeen or something, something like that. Yeah, somewhere around there. Um, yeah, I had a really good tournament. I don't know what happened. Really, um, I lost the. I, you know, I got the first year out of pools, but that's. Not really anything too new from me, so it's just sort of how the bracket would turn out. And I lost to Tony after having a bye in the very first bracket match I played. You know, I beat him in the first game, and then, you know, I, it, was a, it was one of those hack Wii's that had, you know, music on it, and it a really hype song came on that just made me want to play really aggressive. And you can't do that versus DDD. <laughs> like, it's just bad. <laughs> So after that, I lost, and then I lost the very first game I played in the just bracket. I thought I was going to go two and out, like at like 33rd or whatever, and I don't know, then all of a sudden I just started winning and didn't stop for a really long time. Uh, I was, you know, really surprised I took the first game from Adam Misk. I trash talked him a little bit, and I guess he didn't really like that, but, you uh, know, uh, that's just sort of how I am as a player, so. <laughs> I actually wasn't aware of that, because I, I heard somebody, somebody actually compared or, or mentioned that cause we we have a, a our resident trash talker is definitely Black and E, which you may or may not have heard because I know he also attended. But they mentioned both you and him in the same sentence in the trash talking category. I was like, wait, no way, A Z trash talk? I had no idea because I guess I'd never seen you play like in a competitive, you know, yeah. like in a, a bracket. I, I always view it as you know when I'm running a tournament, it's a little more professional than you know when I'm. A player in a tournament, and when I'm a player, uh, you know, outside of actually being in the match, you know, I don't pass off anything really. Um, but you know, the heat of the match, uh, if I can identify that, you know, a player might get manipulated a little bit if I say something here or there, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll say something. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I don't do it with most people. It's usually the players that I think are, you know, in Adam's case, you know, he's clearly way better than me. So I, you know, that just to get that little bit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it works. That's why I want to do more. Who knows? (laughs) That's the New York state of mind. (laughs) Some cunning tactics, Maisie. I'm not even ashamed. Yeah, like, you know, I'll do little things, like, if I've, if I've played someone before, like, you know, I might bring up the time that I won, like, not even, like, so trash talking, but, just to make them think about how they lost to me in the past, and then like they'll enter the game thinking about that. <laughs> so you know, just do little things like that. Interesting strategy. You're about to play someone in bracket, and you tell them all of their habits, and then you immediately start playing and see what happens. <laughs> that's just that's just mean. Like, that's just mean. All their habits, and they'll just mind game them so much. I'm pretty not sure to that do it, not to do it. Adam is in case as well have done that before, and it's brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> well, yeah, people like to tell me I roll a lot, and then, and then I just roll more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Will, Matt, any more questions? Oh, uh, well, I was just going to go into uh, some of the more controversial aspects of your tournament running style, AZ, which obviously you run very successful tournaments. And uh, thanks a lot for running MLG, because those were amazing-ass tournaments. But you have been known to be very liberal with your rule sets and whatnot. Um, do you have any particular justification for, like, your liberal stage lists and whatnot? Um, I would say in 09-ish, you know, you could probably classify me for that liberal mindset. I think of it more now as like a theoretical uh, you know, take on what the rules should be. Uh, my opinion on it all now, though, is more sort of like a realist. Um, you know, there is no ideal rule set. Like the ideal rule set would be whatever you can get all the COs in the country. <laughs> um, I mean, if you take ten people, you know, ten COs, and you put them in a room, give them a piece of paper, and say, you know, write your rule set. Not a single one of those rule sets is going to match, you know, another person. I mean, chances are the stage list is going to match. Um, so, like, the question for me eventually became not, you know, am I right or wrong in thinking, you know, should North be legal? It's, you know, I, it's a combination of what the community lot, you know, what's competitive, and what um, will allow you to run, you know, successful tournaments that you know, people really enjoy. Um, and you have to keep in mind both, you know, um, well, I, I don't know what to say other than the, the whole atmosphere of the event. So that was the mindset that you took when you went into developing things like the, the unified rule set? Yeah, you know, that, that came out, um, you know, before the MLG season, you know, we knew MLG would be a pretty influential rule set. Uh, I had a pretty big say in what got to happen um, with that rule set. And, uh, you know, that was sort of, I had this liberal idea. But yeah, I, I definitely say uh, I'm no longer subscribing to the liberal rule set philosophy or the conservative rule set philosophy. I'm a realist. And I'm a whatever we can get everyone to agree to in philosophy. Yeah, that's definitely the best way to go at it, if you ask me. Um, but... Do you think that we've actually found a happy medium now? Um, you know, I I think we're pretty darn close. I mean, uh, the full rule set for um, what the you know the new group is the DBR um, sorry, uh, DBR rule set community, committee. Uh, you know, what we're gonna produce will hopefully be or well will be a term a rule set used at pretty much every time. And, you know, the happy medium is going to vary based on who you talk to. I mean, it's arbitrary. You could talk to someone on the East Coast and they'll think, you know, what is PS2? Uh, Burnstar, Rainbow Cruise, Picto, all doing on this rule set, you know. But if you went over and looked at the tournaments from the whole country, which a lot of people don't do, you'd be surprised. Uh, you would find that almost every tournament before we made this announcement, had already had Pico. You know, that included, you know, East Coast Radiancy. They had already had a Pico. Town 5 was announced. They already had Pico in PSQ. 
And then if you looked at the MLG rule set, you know, we had Picto and PSQ in there, and we had North Air and Green Beans. Looks like people, you know, they're adding Picto chat, some of them, most of them are adding PS2. Two people were adding Green Green, you know, I think. Um, you know, if you looked at Zero's Hobo tournaments, World Hobo coming up, I mean, he basically had the identical list as, um, that Pound 5 had, except he had General Jake added on top of the Pound 5. So, you know, the conservative rule set of 12 stages, so everything, you know, no Picto Chat, no Green Greens, no Norfair, no PS2, no Jungle Japes, you know, that, that's only used as a very small percentage of tournaments in the whole thing. Um, and just looking at the rule set, adding Picto and adding PS2, led us to 14 stages, was really like, it was pretty much that happy medium. Um, when you looked at all the other tournaments, uh, you know, you know his Katar tournament, he had already had his 14. So he didn't have to really even change much at all to get to, you know, the 14 speed. Zero had to drop one speed. I had to drop two speeds. More fair and we got real early. You know, one or two tournaments, you know, you had to add a stage. And it was very little maneuvering for most TOs in order to get to the 14 speed meeting. Uh, and that was really the biggest reason for me to get that. It wasn't, you know, that Norfair is broken or that, you know, Green Greens is unplayable or Jungle Jake is just, who knows what's wrong with Jungle Jake, you know. Uh, we're not saying that these stages are terrible or that, you know, you can't have good games on them. It's just when it comes to getting everyone to agree to do something, you're not going to convince the whole country to do something. It's never going to happen. So, you know, you got to separate this theory from reality. All right, cool. So, no big blue? It's my favorite stage. I don't know. I've been see. tinkering with it for a little bit, but uh, I don't think we'll see it. <laughs> uh, no, that would make me come to one of your tournaments. Just out of my way, if I saw big blue, like, oh, I'm there. Well, yeah, I, I've been... I <laughs> sometimes throw random stuff on my list. That's, uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm trying a new no school scrooging rule this Saturday, so. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm also trying out 25 edge grabs for Meta Knight. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I want to hear about this. Please let us know how that goes. <laughs> All right. Well, to wrap it up, I just want to ask, uh, UAZ, what are you really looking forward to in 2011? What is, like, the biggest thing you're really, really looking forward to this year? Um, that's a good question. I'm thinking, uh, you know, I went out to Genesis, the first one. Um, I did, I went Genesis and then I went to Evo back to back. Uh, and that was a really fun trip. Uh, I don't know if I'll have the time to do that much, but I'm thinking about going out to Genesis too. And if not that, then, uh, I think Town 5 or Wobo will be really, really good to go to. Uh, I don't know. It, it's, again, you know, without MLG, we got, you know, Wobo, Top 5, Pound 5, Genesis 2, and, you know, KTARS next weekend, you know, all this great tournament's happening. Um, so I think I, what I'm looking forward to most is seeing how the community rebounds, you know, after what happened with MLG. Um, and I'm also hoping I can try and get first in Ohio again. Um, I was first most of 2009, and I hosted tournaments in 2010 and didn't really practice very much, so. <laughs> I'm looking forward to being able to practice and concentrate on doing well at you know big tournaments. All right, cool. Well, I want to thank you very much for joining us on the show, and uh, Alpha Zero, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for having me. All right, everybody. That brings us to the end of Direction Influence episode 15. As always, we want to thank PVV Gaming for hosting us, and check out the Loose Bracket if you haven't already. Check out our previous episode, and check out Gimpy Fish's Player Progress videos for video and the intro one, because this is all PVV stuff, and we love PVV, at least I do. And um, also, if you want to follow us, there's a lot of following to do. We are on Smashboards, we are on All Is Ball, Twitter, and Facebook. And you can hit us up on AIM for directional influence stuff. If you want to be a guest, if you want to leave comments, uh, critiques, share us with your friends and whatnot, talk about it around the water cooler, feel free to. 
We have tons of places where you can talk about us, listen to us, etc. Hit us up on those. On Facebook, we are Directional Influence. On Twitter, you can follow me at VUD Rapture. Um, shout outs. True. We always do shout outs. I want to give shout outs before you guys go. Uh, to Alpha Zealot for coming on the show. For being the man, uh, doing the recording. I want to give also a shout out to Stemage. For those guys who don't know, Stemage is a band that does the Metroid Metal, uh, uh Metroid Metal covers. And they are supplying the music for our show, really. So I want to give uh, props to them for letting us do that. And I want to give another shout-out to uh, the blizzard that just hit me in the rest of Connecticut and the Northeast and everywhere, really, because I didn't have school today. Or, as of this recording, didn't have school today. And there was a lot of snow, though a wag of my finger for making me struggle all of it. Matt? Uh, right. Shout-outs to the New York, New Jersey community for reviving itself again. Uh, I mean, we got plenty of tournaments coming up, guys, so there's no Johns as far as making it to tournaments go. And uh, shout-outs to League of Legends for taking up my time, my free wow. time. Uh, Will, shout-out. Okay, shout-outs to Inring for that, that epic comeback versus me and Orion 2v1 in doubles this past weekend at, at Rank Battles number one. But I walked up to you and DK punched you in the face, and then you proceeded to punch the wall. So shout outs to Amy. <laughs> oh yeah, shout outs to Cheese for your eight dollars in the four consecutive money matches you insisted on playing me in. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, Cheese. By the way, Cheese, feel free to get at me with that Pikachu or that Falco or whatever you call him for any amount of money. Let's do that. Yo, again. Cheese, money match my snake. It's so good, I might as well be faded. Come on. Next time in Long Island, let's go, let's do it. Rapture, he might as well be fatal. I might as well be fatal. Anyway, uh, that is the show, and I hope you guys enjoy listening to it. Join us next week for episode 16. Uh, we got stuff we're doing, as always. You know, no surprises. So, anyway, that is it for this week. We're signing off. Thank you for listening to the Directional Influence, and have a good day.